Hello, so for this tutorial, um, we're going to go over how to get video out of Premiere Pro. So this is something that we haven't covered in any of the tutorials yet, um, but this is a fitting time to do it. And because I've created this masterful work of art in the previous tutorial, um, I'm going to be using that as the video that we will be exporting. Uh, and so, you know, you could do this with honestly any project you've been working on, um, any one of the tutorials. This one is just, you know, it's not, it's actually pretty long. Um, so I might, so I might have to wait for, um, it to down, for it to finish rendering. Um, and then I'll have to hang out and, you know, stop and start the tutorial. But, um, right. So we're going to do this thing, our little modified eye video. Um, we could render out a small portion too. Maybe that's something we could talk about. Um, and there's a little error here I'm going to fix real quick before we go any further. Okay, so I've made that little fix. Uh, and so let's go ahead and look at how to export things. So first, um, something to note is in order to export the sequence that you're currently working on, you need to make sure that your timeline is the window you have selected, right? So it's highlighted in blue, right? If I click over here and I go up to File and go to Export, my export options, um, oops, sorry, go back, I spazzed too much. Uh, my export options are all unavailable, right? They're all grayed out. So I have to make sure that I select this. And if I happen to have multiple sequences, I want to make sure I've selected the, like if I had two tabs here, I want to make sure that I've selected the correct tab or else I'm going to be exporting the wrong thing. And so, um, right, what we've been looking at in our program are just preview files, right? They're not the fully rendered video. Sometimes they're really close, but a lot of times they're not. And sometimes, and depending on what effects we've applied, we might have a lot of rendering to do. And so in this case, you know, there's not too much. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, so it shouldn't take too long for these videos to be rendered. So let's go ahead and come over to File. And when we go to File, we go down to Export. And the very top option is Media. That's what we want to export. There's other, EDL is this other option. There's a bunch of other things we can potentially um, export, but most of the time what we're gonna wanna do is export the media. It's also Command-M or Control-M if you're in Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and click on media and it'll take a second. And then this export settings pop-up window pops up. And so this is what is going to be output, right? So the source scaling says scale to fit, which is what we want. That's the default setting. Um, this is where my playhead currently is and I can scan through here. And it says that the source range currently is the work area. Right, and we talked about this a bit before. I'm going to move this to the side. Right, the work area is defined by this gray bar, and by default, it stretches to be as long as the clip. If I only wanted to export part of this, which in this case I might want to do, um, I can adjust the work area. And there's a couple places I can do it. I could either, before I bring this pop up up, I could go ahead and adjust the work area um, in here. Like, let's say I just want to export the eye. Um, which maybe that's the fastest way to do it because it'll take no time at all to export. So we'll probably do that in a second. The other place I can do it is I can actually adjust the length of the work area here, right, in order to, but I don't have as much resolution, um, but in order to trim off this and just do a certain area here, right, I can use both of these um, tabs to just say, pull this down and say, oh, I only want to, right, export this part with the eye, with the iris. So um, I have the option to set it here, or I have the option to set it there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way out, um, back to the edges. And so the other thing you'll note in here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit easier on YouTube, um, is I can also do the entire sequence, the sequence in and out points. Remember, in a sequence, I can hit I and O on my timeline to set an in and out point for the sequence as well, um, or the work area or custom, which is what was selected when I started dragging these points around. So because I'm doing this in a um, strange way, I'm going to um, actually cancel this real quick. I might not even, I'm gonna cancel this real quick. I'm gonna set my um, work area in this window so I have a bit more resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the end of the clip here. I'm gonna drag it down so it's just over the start of the eye clip. I'm gonna go 
to the other gently eye with my playhead. I'm gonna hold down shift. And then I'm gonna go and scale way out so that I can grab this other end of the work area and I can drag this over. And so now my work area is just the eye, right? I could turn this, right? I could export this and then turn this into a GIF pretty easily if I wanted to. Um, so I've got the eye. Um, and so now if I go to file and I go to export media, you'll see that this blue area is significantly shorter. Now, if I have been working on some part of the work area and I actually wanted to ex export the whole thing, I can always go to the source range and say entire sequence. Um, and that way, or I could just manually drag it out to be a larger section, right? Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna just go to work area. So it stays in that small area. And then there's all of these options over here for how we want to save this. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit so we can see um, what these are. So um, one of the simplest ways to do this with the least um, loss of quality is to, you can either check mark match sequence settings, or you can just leave it in, and I think this is the default for everything, but the format is H.264 and the preset is match source high bitrate. Um, and right, in this case, I only wanna export the video, but I'm gonna leave export audio on. Um, it's muted, so we're not gonna hear it. There are oftentimes, um, when you go to use video in another program, if it doesn't have an audio track, it can give you an error. And so it's always good, even if your audio is totally silent, to export the audio track as well, because then um, the software reading it doesn't think something's wrong with the video file. Uh, so under format, I just wanna show you some of the many, many options we've got, right? If I open this up, there are a ton of different formats that I can use to export this. Um, some of these will be, if you're working in Windows, you're gonna have a slightly different set. You most likely will not have Apple ProRes as an option. Um, you may have, um, what's it called? Uh, you may have AVI and, um, and DVI as options that I don't have because I don't have those codecs installed. Um, note that MP3, AIFF, AAC Audio, Wave, which I believe Waveform Audio is down here, all of those are just going to export the audio track. So if you only want to export audio, you can do that. Um, so other options, you'll see this PNG, TIFF, JPEG, right, um, and Open EXR. These are the highest quality, and look, animated GIF, uh, but these are the highest quality um, formats you can use. And what they are is they essentially create a sequence of still images and they store those in a folder. So you would have for, uh, this isn't 10 minutes long, but if it was 10 minutes long, I'd have, you know, thousands of images in this folder, right? And that's the highest quality because it creates an actual image for every file. And when you're doing animation and things like that, typically that's what you want. You want, you want to have as much quality as possible, at least in your first copy of the video. Um, but we're, but that takes a huge amount of space. And so we're not going to do that with this. We're going to leave it at H.264. H.264 and H.265 are both really good um, low loss uh, compression algorithms that allow you to have pretty high quality video. The only reason I'm not doing H.265 is because there's a lot of limitations on where you can use that right now. Um, whereas H.264 is one of the standards. Um, pretty much everything will accept it and play it. Um, so there's presets as well, like you can either create your own presets. They have a bunch of different ones here. Um, you know, there's, if I go down, they have, you know, all of these different presets. Whenever I'm uploading one of these tutorials, I always use the YouTube 1080p full HD preset, right? Because that gets it as close to what um, YouTube wants so that when I go to have it processed, I lose the least in, like information in that trans transition. And it takes usually takes less time for that process to happen. Um, but so yeah, if you're, we're gonna leave it at match source high bit rate. Um, basically the higher the bit rate, 
the um, higher quality that image is going to be. The lower the bit rate, you're going to have more artifacts and things that happen. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of other stuff in there, right? But wherever you're going to post it, if it has a preset, great, use the preset. So, right, Facebook, etc. So then the output name. This caught me up forever when I was uh, first learning to do this. I didn't understand how to change the location of where I want to, or the name of the file that I want to save. So what I do is if you click on this title, that or on the output name, what happens is then it opens a save dialog. And at that point I can say, oh, this should be, I'm just going to call it blue eye, blue eye. I don't know. I don't know why. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and put this not in another class's tutorials, but I'm going to jump a, at least jump to our class and probably just put it in the raw tutorial video. So there we go. All right. And so then I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, and when I click save, all it does is change the name and basically prepare the space uh, for the video to be saved to, but it hasn't actually started doing anything yet. It gives you a little summary here. There's a bunch of other options. It, this is where if you wanted to change the resolution, um, like make it bigger, make it smaller, um, adjust the frame rate, etc., cetera, um, this is where you would set all of these options. And there's several, um, there's several different uh, tabs here. And generally just leaving everything set to the default um, is fine unless you have a specific need. And there's a lot of Right, there's a lot of stuff in here, and you'll see this keyframe distance and all of that. Right, that's basically I, in class today I talked about the difference between an I frame and a P frame, and this keyframe is essentially the the distance between I frames. Um, and you can, if you shorten that, you're gonna it's gonna be a bigger file, but you'll also have higher quality and less compression. So, and obviously this is not VR video, so we're not gonna check mark that. Once I've gone through those settings, there's all of these other options to use maximum render quality. Um, you know, and maybe this is short enough. I'm going to go ahead and check that because I want this to look really great. Um, and then it talks about if you're this, this only really matters if you are, um, right, if you're changing the frame rate from, say, 30 frames a second to, I don't know, 15 or 20 or 60 frames a second. Um, this timer interpolation basically stretches your video to fit that number of frames and it tells you similarly to when we use slow motion, um, when we slow footage down, it's the same interpolation methods, right? There's frame sampling, blending, and optical flow. Um, and then it tells you about how big this file is going to be. Now there's two ways we can go proceed from here. We can either hit export which um, allows us to, it'll export just from this dialog in Adobe, in Premiere, and it will render. However, what I suggest you do, and what we're going to do this time, is to click on Q. And Q allows us to use Adobe Media Encoder to queue this file. It should already be installed on the computer that has Premiere on it, um, because Premiere and After Effects both use Media Encoder to do the exporting that they do, even if they're doing it in the software itself. But when you queue it, if I click queue, it does the export data and it takes a second and then media encoder starts to open. Wow, look at that timing. That was amazing. Um, and so, right, so we're going to wait a second while media encoder opens. And what media encoder does is it basically allows you to render video in the background, right? You can set things to render. You could have a whole series of videos that you need to say render as tutorials to upload to YouTube inside uh, Media Encoder, there's a few things, but we've already set all the presets and everything that we need. Um, you can do this all in here. You can actually um, pull up projects in here without even going into Premiere um, and add those projects. There's a lot of different ways. If I wanted to change my format, I can do that here. Um, and, you know, this is a custom preset because I checkmarked maximum render quality. Again, I could click on this to change the save location if I realize, oops, um, I put it in the wrong place at the very last minute or I misnamed it or something like that. But if everything is all right, I don't need to worry about any of these other things except this little green play arrow here. 
right? And so if you know you're going to have like say several short clips that you want to export, go ahead. You go back to you could go back to Premiere, find the next one, um, click Q again, and then you'd have say like say if I was here, I'm not going to do this, but right, say I went back to Premiere and I wanted to export this part as well, right? I could go ahead and change my work area to cover this area here, and then I could go up to you know. I could hit Command M and then reset the same settings and hit Q and it would bring it back into Media Encoder. And then I'd have both and I hit play. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through whichever one's first. It'll encode first and then we'll encode the next one, etc., etc. So we're just going to go ahead and hit play. And here it goes, right? This is a really short clip, so it's going very, very fast. As your videos get longer, it takes it can take significantly longer to render. And if you have a lot of effects that are really processor intensive to, to do, um, your uh, it'll go it'll take a lot longer. Okay, so I've rendered this now. If I want to check this file out, all I have to do is click on the title here, and it'll take me directly to that. I think unless I've clicked off something. Usually it just opens it up. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I, I just got away from it. All right, so right, so then in on the Mac, if I select something in the Finder, I can hit the space bar to preview it. Um, in Windows, it's a little bit different. But all right, so now here's my video playing, right? It's 45 seconds long or 50 seconds long, something like that. And so um, that's all this tutorial is, right? Uh, you just, um, when you start rendering something, there is the ability to pause it in Media Encoder. So like say you need to um, close up your computer and move somewhere else, right? You can, when you're playing it, you can pause the encoding. Um, the only issue is if you're doing it to an external drive and you have to disconnect that drive, um, things could go really badly. Um, so, Basically, once something starts rendering, it's probably going to take a bit. You should get walk away, get a coffee, you know, have a margarita, you know, do whatever it is that you need to do to take your mind off rendering. Um, but if you're still working on other parts of the video, by using Media Encoder, you can still work within Premiere. If you click the Export button, you can't do anything else in Premiere until the video is done encoding. All right, so that's all this tutorial is. Hopefully that's helpful. It's it's pretty simple. Um, we could talk more in class about advanced options if you have special needs, like a need to, you know, increase the resolution or something, or shrink it, or or change the frame rate. We can talk about that more specifically, or you could just experiment with the settings and see if you can get something interesting. All right, I will see you in class.